Hi guys. Okay, so I feel like a complete moron. I'm using my selfie stick. I'm walking up the hellish hill with my selfie stick. So, the first person to drive by is going to get a cackle. Um, but you know what? It, it, it is actually helpful. I'm going to admit that Billy was right. It is actually helpful. And I think it gives me a better um, angle than like looking up my nostrils the whole time, which I think is a good thing. Um, speaking of Billy, um, didn't start off being such a great morning with Billy this morning, gotta be honest. Um, I said something rude. I admit it was rude. And um, I told him he was behaving like elevated. Cause sometimes I feel like he can get really urgent. When I say that, like his energy just gets really big. And um, anyway, Vance walked in the room and Billy started getting in my opinion, a bit urgent. And so I said, oh, dad's just, you know, being a little elevated right now. And I could tell he was super annoyed. So I prayed about it begrudgingly. And the Lord put it on my heart that it's so easy to just say you're sorry. And I was like, well, that's easy for you to say, God. But, um, you know, I don't really want to. And um, then of course, I got the little discipline smack and the obedience smack. And um, you know, he said it's about being a soldier for me. And you know, if someone uh, slaps you on the cheek, what are you supposed to do? Give them your other cheek. So I wrote him a text message and I just said, please forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. It was rude and it was inappropriate and it was uncalled for. <laughs> I really said all these things. And I said, um, you know, please forgive me. Um, all you were trying to do was help Vance get started with his school project and that's awesome and I should have been more supportive. And of course he did not answer my text, <laughs> but that's okay. I did my part. And then later in the afternoon, I saw him and he was kind of giving me the cold shoulder. And um, I walked up to him and I said, you know, with open arms and I said, can I give you a hug? I'm sorry, I'm so mean to you. <laughs> and I gave him a hug and he kind of tapped my back a little bit. But that's okay, you know, sometimes you just gotta eat crow. Sometimes you just gotta say you're sorry. And I, you know, that's something that's never come naturally to me, I admit that. I think the light is better here. How's this light, a little bit better? I'm so vain. Anyway, um, yeah, so I ate some crow and apologized and then we had a little afternoon delight. You know, what can I say? My kids are probably like, mother, don't say that on your YouTube channel. So embarrassing. Um, look, it's healthy. It's healthy. I pray that for any marriage. Okay, here comes people. See, now this is exactly what I dread with my selfie stick. This is so embarrassing. What am I gonna do? Be with me, Lord, be with me. Hi. Um, I know the way the cat follows is hysterical, right? No, it's been doing it since it was like, you know, 13 weeks old. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. I know, I know. You wanna be on my YouTube channel? Uh -huh. Say hi. Hi everybody. <laughs> Peace of Christ. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. I'm so embarrassed. Yes, Black Lives Matter. Bye. Take care. Enjoy your walk. Thanks. Okay, that wasn't so bad, I guess. Um, yes, okay. 
So, as I was saying, um, yeah, you know, I did my wifely duties, and um, then I went out uh, into the backyard and read a bunch of your comments and uh, responded. I just love your comments, you guys, so much. You have no idea how much joy it brings me. And oh, we, we saw the new house this morning. We did a walkthrough of the new house. And um, it looks great, you know? It looks really, really great. We're gonna have to get a storage facility because we're renting the house furnished and we have a few things that uh, are definitely gonna have to go into storage. But the Lord blessed us with this storage facility that's like half off right now because of COVID. And um, I found a great unit and you know hallelujah it's like more money extra money that has to go down the drain every single month but you know what can you do you just have to put it in god's hands right i just have to trust that he's going to provide and that the money will flow abundance will flow all will be well you know uh why did i wear this jacket i am boiling right now here comes the view guys maybe the selfie stick will help with the view. I just spit, I hope you didn't see that. That would be also very embarrassing. Okay, hold on, here we go. Turning it around. Oh. Can you see it? <laughs> I'm aw awing and you're probably seeing nothing. Okay, yeah, yeah? I hope so, I hope you got to see that, it's very pretty. Um, so I had some alone time with Brooke today, which was fantastic. She, um, she and I love spending time together. We just always laugh. And I pulled a horrible, very evil joke on her today. I told her that Billy had an affair with one of my friends back in New York, just to see what her like reaction would be. And she was like, what? And I said, I said yeah, you didn't know that? She was like, no, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that. And uh, I couldn't keep the joke going for very long because of course she was just like turning white. And, um, oh, Henny, that feels so good. My kitty, he's rubbing up against my legs and he's so sweet. Can't, Henny, say hi, say hi, Hendrix. Anyway, uh, yeah, the joke was pretty funny in the moment but um, <laughs> she was pretty taken aback. Do you guys do that kind of stuff with your kids or I'm just ultra evil? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I used to love that show Punked with Ashton Kutcher. I actually used to pull some pretty dramatic practical jokes on my husband. Very, very, you know, thought out, very uh, dark practical jokes. Nothing that would, you know, um, necessarily harm him or hurt, you know hurt him in any way but we'll, we'll have to do a chili where we talk about my practical jokes because I was the queen of uh, punking before the show should have been my show he stole my idea but um, so yeah I um, I had a pretty good day today I just you know kind of kept it simple and didn't major on the minor and um, tried to uh, really just do what's in front of me instead of like projecting. I tried to stay in the moment. That's always helpful. And um, yeah, you know, I just feel like my bones have been hurting me, my joints have been hurting me and I'm wondering if maybe my autoimmune stuff is kicking up because I had Lyme disease and I had Epstein-Barr and um, what else did I have? Um, yeah, I had some inflammation, you know, and uh, yeah, my inflammation blood numbers were quite high at one point and I was able to get those down with diet and um, some other things that, uh, you know, I could go on and on with the other alternative medicines and things that I used to help get me back in shape. But I'm starting to feel rickety again. I'm waking up and I'm like getting out of bed and everything hurts and I feel unstable and I feel 
Like, ouch, it hurts. My body hurts. Is it just because I'm 52? I mean, I'm not eating fast food. I'm not eating ice cream and cookies. And, you know, I'm very low sugar diet. I mean, barely any sugar at all. You know, a um, little bit of carbs, yes. Barely any gluten. So I can't really figure out what's going on. But um, I want to get it under control because I'm only 52. It's not like I'm 82. And that's how I feel a little bit right now, which is scaring me because that's not okay with me. I'm not, no, no, I have to get this under control. So uh, I think I'll just get a little blood work done, see where my inflammation numbers are at. And um, hopefully, what is it, Pokey? She's got some, what is it, honey? What, what is it that you want? You wanna tell the audience what you want? Do you have a golden nugget to give us? Are you gonna, are you gonna bless us with some nuggets? Come on, you want to bless us with some nuggets? Go poo poo. Poo poo, mama. Um, yeah, and then there's sweet Henny. Whoa, wait, where's Henny? Oh, there he is. I got to get used to the selfie stick. Um, look, he's black and white. He's, he knows, he's protesting all day long. <laughs> he knows. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm rickety, I'm achy, I've got some pain, and I don't know. I'm just uh, worried about it. I, I am. I'm worried about it because I felt this way about six years ago and had to get it under control, and it took me a lot of juicing and a lot of supplements and a lot of stretching. Oh, i got to get back. i got to get back on the program, I think. Um, so we are, um, you know, we are God's children. I mean, it's just crazy all day today. I've just been like, Lord, you know, I am not my own. You are, um, my breath. You are my life. You are my reason. You are my Lord. You are, um, you know, you, you put me here to serve you. You know, I'm an ambassador for Christ. You're an ambassador for Christ. And, you know, that's really the true reason why we're here is to, sorry for the wind, is to um, glorify him, love him, praise him, adore him, be fishers of men, and and help, you know, the, 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 the poor and, you know, uh, the hungry, and you know, I've got to get better about that. Really, I've got to get better about that. There's an orphanage in, in, in Tijuana called Los Angelitos Orphanage that um, you know I write checks to and I help build with Billy this beautiful orphanage. I mean, it literally looks like a Four Seasons. And it wasn't just us, there were a bunch of people involved in it, but um, it's gorgeous. And there's like 25 or 30 kids there and um, and it's a beautiful facility, and I'm proud of that. You know, I'm happy we were able to get that done. But, you know, writing checks just doesn't feel like enough, you know? Um, and I can't even write checks right now. Like, I'm not in a position to be able to be writing checks to various charities, or I'm just, I'm just not in that. Oh, yeah, it's very cute. Do that again. Do that again. Show them what you just did. He's rolling around in the dirt. Show them talk to the paw but you know I definitely um, you know I just got to get on my knees and I just have to say God use me use me as an instrument use me as a vehicle show me what you want me to do because I feel like this has been something that I've struggled with and of course this channel is a huge blessing and I feel like I'm doing my part in um, helping people not feel so alone in their walk because you know I'm not a pastor but I definitely enjoy helping other people realize that like we all have our bad days we all have our days where we're lacking in spirit we all have our days where we don't feel like opening our Bibles we all have our days where we're feeling you know super energized in the spirit and pumped up and our batteries are charged and we're you know 
ready to be on the front lines for Jesus, you know. But I wanted this channel to be a soft place for people to land where they can see my raw, honest walk with God, which has its ups and downs. Faith has its ups and downs. It's not like every single day I, you know, have the faith to move mountains. I, I probably, it's probably in there somewhere, but I don't feel like I have the faith to move mountains every single day at all. Um, and I wanted people to have a safe place to be able to talk about, you know, that this is not an easy journey. I mean, God calls us to pick up our cross and to, you know, uh, walk through the fire and to expect tribulation and um, to be, you know, to, to, to be joyful when we're suffering because it's all for his glory. And that's all true, but it doesn't make it easy, you know? Um, so that's really my mission statement for this channel is that I just want it to be a place where people can see like, wow, I don't have to beat myself up about, you know, because for so many years I didn't even believe Jesus loved me. Okay. So, you know, I had a long way to go and of course I still do, but I had a really long way to go because I just didn't even believe that Jesus loved me. And when you don't believe that Jesus loves you, it is very, very challenging to have a relationship with him. Um, it was uh, a total struggle. Um, and some days still are, but today I do believe that Jesus loves me. So that's a huge victory. Just knowing that Jesus loves me is a, you know, a gigantic victory. Um, but I want to... I don't want to leave this planet feeling like I didn't do enough and not for my salvation. I know there's really nothing I can do for my salvation. I'm saved, um, by the grace of God and, um, and you know, salvation is received and not achieved. And I try and remind myself of that. But at the same time, like, Oh, I so envy people who are like, I'm going on a missions trip and, you know, I'm, or I'm, you know, I'm building a church in, you know, Guam or I'm, you know what I'm talking about, those people and God bless those people. But it's so hard for me because I feel like I really struggle with, can we turn around? Lady bug, come on, let's go this way. It's getting, you know, it's coyote hour. We don't want any coyotes. Oh, I'm so scared of coyotes beyond. But um, yeah, I just, you know, Jesus will tell me. Jesus will tell me. I have to just trust that Jesus is going to tell me and direct me and show me what I, what else I can do. You know, what else can I do? I prayed about this channel for years and now look, here it is. It's here, but I just didn't know where to begin. And little did I know it's called turning your phone on video and taping yourself and posting it. Like it's that simple, but I complicated it and I made it like, you know, this huge deal. And I worried and obsessed about it for months and months and months and months, years. And, um, you know, God's never late. God always shows up on time. So obviously this channel happened when it was supposed to happen. And I have to trust that my service to the world, however that may look, and why do I always think it has to be so grand? You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be large scale. You know, uh, Jesus chose 12 disciples. He didn't choose 30,000 people. He chose 12, 12. And look what they did. Look what they did. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be so grand. It, I, I, I don't have to make it this big, gigantic, you know, endeavor. It's like I make it bigger than it needs to be. And I always think it has to be on this grand scale. Okay, this is awkward. Pokey, what are you doing? So, yeah. I'm gonna pray about that one because I do, I wanna do more, you know? But I have to remember, all these works are not getting me into heaven. You know what I mean? None of these works really are getting me into heaven. And I know there's a little controversy around that. Like, you know, everything we do, this really helps me. Everything we do for someone else, we are actually doing for Jesus. And 
that to me is, is beautiful. He says, whatever you do for a brother or sister, you are actually doing for me. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, that is so beautiful. I just want to do stuff for Jesus. I just want to do stuff for the Lord. And I want to do, you know, the Lord's biz. So anyway, um, I pray that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, that you're having a glorious, beautiful day and that you're feeling Christ-centered and that you know Jesus loves you. And um, yeah, let's not major on the minor and Black Lives Matter. And I hope that um, you're listening to your heart and doing your part in that. And um, yeah, you know, let's just remember that we can no longer live in the realm of reason. Mm -mm. We gotta live in the realm of the supernatural and the miraculous because that is really what life is all about and especially life when you're walking with Jesus. A friend of mine said that her mother's last words on her dying bed were to her, last words. She said children to both her kids, children live your life as if each day is a miracle because it is. And then she died. Wow. Wow. Word. Life is a miracle, guys. Life is a miracle. Many blessings, many, many, many hugs and kisses. Ciao for now.